Very short video on bell crank installation. And the reason why it's going to be short is there's, you know, Mike Griffin's got a bell crank installation video on stun hang or control line craftsman. That's the same thing that, that we're going to do here. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to install this Steve Wilk bell crank. I don't have the leave outs on it, but that's all right. Um, the way that I do it, this bell crank will come in and out without a big deal. So, we'll get right to it. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to want to cut a piece of wire uh, as long as it is to go from the top of the uh, wing to the bottom. Leave about an eighth of an inch sticking out. So you want the, the uh, root thickness plus an eighth and I'll show you why in a second here. We definitely want to zoom this in. I'm trying to get all the cameras sorted out here. So, this is a Steve Wilk bell crank. They're the lightest thing out there, about 7 grams. And, uh, I think he sells them for $15. You can't hardly go wrong there. <clears throat> so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole down through the uh, wing here. So we're going to need a drill bit. And there we go. This is 964. And of course, here we go, 8th inch. Oh, this is 964s too. Yeah, it'll be close enough. It's only balsa wood. So I'm going to drill right down through the center of this. Through the center of the spar. Now normally, like on a D-tube or a... Or a... Uh, foam wing or whatever, you don't have this that you can drill down through. Well, that's not a big deal either. And what you do with that is you suspend a piece of plywood across two ribs. It, well, I normally do it in the form of a compression spar. And, uh, Suspend the bell crank in there like that. Well, bummer, it didn't go all the way through. That's all right. We'll get her here. one or two ways. You can use wheel collars and uh, put a wheel collar on this eighth inch piece of piano wire to hold the bell crank in the correct position. This way a wheel collar on the top and the bottom and we might do that. Or you can do the way Wendy used to do it which is a good way. With these brass grommets. One on each side. So, what we're going to end up having here is a bell crank that's suspended between two pieces of 
there are two brass grommets, and then they just this just slips in to here as such, and uh, we'll cut the. Uh, I'll go ahead and cut the grommets to show you how it, how it works. I mean, it's it's absolutely simple how this is done. Somebody was waiting for me to uh, to do a bell crank install. Well, I guess if you don't, if you had never seen it done before, it would be perplexing. But it's really not that far of a stretch. I tell you what's really bad is I still can't find that rudder. <laughs> that. That is aggravating me to no end. I have looked some more in all the places and it's still nowhere to be found. So we need to get a cutoff wheel. See if I can find one here. not. Yeah, I have to make one up. I can't tell you how aggravated I am that that, that, that rudder is gone. <laughs> I at least want to look at it and see, compare the weights. And I'll probably look again until we can find, see if we can find the darn thing. Aggravating. So I got the cutoff wheel in, in the uh, Dremel. And the first one needs to be about a quarter of an inch. So we'll cut this off here. This is the lightest way. Hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing. Anyway, now we're going to get the uh, length of the top one. And we need to cut 3 sixteenths off of that one. And I just do this stuff by eye, you know what I mean? It's not that critical. So now, let me see if I can position this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take 
take all this mess off of here. both in there. I have to get my tweezers out. And people say, well, that's flimsy. That won't work. Well, it'll be just fine. It would never pull out of here once it's <clears throat> got the aircraft ply on top and bottom of the, of the wing between the fuselage sides. Impossible. Because you're not pulling on the wing. You're pulling on the fuselage. And there you have it. That's the install of the bell crank. It's that easy. Of course, you have to fish the wires through there. And when the wing's all sheeted, when the wing's all sheeted, is this the other side? I think this must be the other side. Yeah. When the wing's all sheeted, you just simply have a piece of uh, aircraft plywood, seven ply plywood, running between the fuselage sides with a hole drilled in it. It's epoxied onto the top and the bottom between the fuselage. There's no way it's going to pull out of there. Absolutely no way. It would be. <laughs> It would be a miracle. So I, I wasn't going to do that, but I wasn't going to do this right away. But uh, I decided I'd, I'd show how that was done. But if you look on uh, Control Line Craftsman, Mike Griffin has a uh, has a tutorial on how to do that, and. Uh, that's how it works. So I'll go ahead and edit this up. And uh, I'll get it up so you can see how it was done. I can't tell if it's showing or not. It looks like it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share my videos. That's how I do it. So, as I stated before, if you didn't have this spar, you could simply glue a piece of uh, eighth inch, uh, eighth inch uh, bass wood on the top of the wing here. Drill a hole down through the bass wood and, uh, and suspend it the same way. Real simple, so we'll see you in a short.